And welcome back to the Cincinnati Reds franchise mode here on MLB The Show 24. And today, again, we are finishing up the 2025 regular season. We don't care about this. I mean, again, it is a losing season for the Reds. Right now, we're 62 and 78. There is no playoffs in sight, and all we are trying to do for the rest of the season is to just develop our guys and get them ready for next season. We randomly go on a five-game winning streak between those games with the Giants and the Mets. I don't understand, so it's going to mess up our draft positioning just a little bit. But again, we should end the season with around 80-something losses, as of course we beat the Marlins twice to end the year. Again, though, that's not a big deal. We'll go into the season finale with a record of 75 wins and 86 losses. 24 games back of the Cubs leading the NL Central and 17 games back of the National League Wild Card. So again, no playoffs in sight, but that is just fine with me as we take on the 68 and 93 Miami Marlins. Again, we mentioned it in the last episode, the same team we started the season against in South Beach. We take on yet again to finish the season here at Great American Ballpark in Cincinnati, Ohio. And of course, today you're going to see some of these guys who just made their ways to the major league. Um, in the last episode, we called up both Xavier Isaac, Sal Stewart, and actually we called up Austin Hendrick as well. Hendrick, though, has made his way back down to AAA just because the guy wasn't producing at the major league level at all, even in a bench role. So instead, we called back up Christian Encarnacion Strand, and with it being September and 28 guys being allowed on the major league roster, we brought in Novi Marte back into the swing of things. But again, this guy's batting 190. I don't have him batting today in the lineup just to close it out because I don't want to see an Novi Marte perform. I think he's going to get traded in the offseason. I'll be straight up honest with you. I think there's no room for him on this team. I don't see him with the future on this team as well. So we'll see. We can get to that in the offseason. Andrew Abbott pitching tonight, 4.31 ERA for him this year. Probably his worst year as a starting pitcher in the MLB. I don't know how that's not a strike right there to Jazz Chisholm. But again, we'll have the Marlins and Reds going here tonight. We can talk a little bit about the future of this team as well because tomorrow we will have the offseason where, again, I don't want to remain in this losing culture with the Reds. We are trying to go out and we are trying to make a run at things eventually and I'm hoping that run at things comes next season again this is a team that's just one year removed from making the NLCS and you know one game away from the World Series like again we got to start building towards that again the guys the key guys in this team and the core guys will stick around I'm talking about Friedel I'm talking about McLean is here's your Reds lineup Friedel McLean at De La Cruz Votto Benson Stevens and Isaac Ruiz Stewart Today, as you might see in the title of this video, this is Joey Votto's farewell game, the final game of his career likely being played tonight. At least we're not extending him. I hope he retires because I just can't keep a 60 overall Joey Votto on this team as Ellie De La Cruz pops out right there. And here he is for the final time, Joey Votto being announced as the first baseman of the Cincinnati Reds. The former MVP steps into the box and strikes out on that Sandy Alcantara sinker away. Again, what a career it has been for Joey Votto. I'm glad he's been able to finish it back in Cincinnati as Nick Fortes, oh, gonna get robbed of a hit. TJ Friedel with the leaping grab puts him away. But yes, very glad Joey Votto could come back to Cincinnati for his final season. Instead of finishing things up north in Canada, I think it's just fitting, again, that he stops um, one more time in Cincinnati before his career is over. Anthony Santander, though, right there with a two-out double, extending the inning for the eighth spot in Jesse Franklin lefty-lefty matchup, and he did go on that fastball up. So again, the core guys will remain. I'm talking about Friedel, McLean, De La Cruz, even a guy like Tyler Stevenson, I do want to keep around as well. I think, again, he has a long-term future on this team. Um, and the pitching staff as well, You'd like to see Andrew Abbott returned. I haven't even talked about Hunter Green much this season, but Hunter Green should have been an all-star this year around a, I believe a 2.5 ERA. He had an outstanding season as a starter for this team. And he will definitely, I think, be the ace of this team. If not, I think he'll be a really good number two guy for us. Cause again, I will be in the market looking for, you know, an ace level pitcher. Obviously we tried to get that in Max Freed um, last off season. And you know, Freed was not bad for us. He will be pitching in the postseason this year for the San Diego Padres. Um, and again, this Nothing against Max Fried. It's just that situationally it didn't really work out for us. I didn't want to bring him back next season on the last year of his deal. I thought we could probably look to get a different guy this offseason. And that's entirely what I'm going to do. I'm going to be looking for the premier pitching, you know, prize in free agency. Because we'll have money to spend. As again, our bats seem to get going as well. We had one hit through the first nine as TJ Friedel finally going to score that first run here in game 162. It is a solo shot in a deep center field. 1-0 here with two outs in the third. 
TJ Friedel takes the former Cy Young and Sandy Alcantara deep. 28 home runs for TJ Friedel out the leadoff spot. Insane stuff this season from Friedel. And it makes you wonder with the power numbers that we got out of both Friedel and De La Cruz this season. And again, I'm going to talk about that in tomorrow's episode. And it's Matt McLean right there going to get another single in this game. But again, the power numbers that we've gotten out of some of these guys, especially with De La Cruz and Friedel, makes you ask the question, do we need to move these guys a little bit? You know, I mean, De La Cruz is in the three, but do we need to move Friedel at least into the two so we can have guys on base for him to potentially, you know, drive in? I think it's something definitely to look at. Um, is Matt McLean that leadoff guy? I don't think so but i think again we look in free agency we look for another guy who can do really well in the leadoff spot because don't get me wrong i like tj friedel there but i think a guy who's hitting 28 home runs maybe should be in at least a two or a three spot and again friedel doesn't look like that guy who would normally be there but again I don't know. I mean, we could keep him in the leadoff spot, honestly, and just let him hit for power, you know, at the one. I'm not, you know, totally against that. We'll see. I think, again, we just got to see what things look like come the course of free agency, as this game is now tied, by the way, after that Jake Berger triple Nick Fortes is going to drive him in just by putting the ball in play. Right there, there will be a strikeout of Brian De La Cruz. So we're knotted up at 1-1, going in the bottom of the fourth. Joey Votto will strike out for the second consecutive time in today's game. One gone for Will Benson on the 1-1 pitch. Benson goes up the middle. And he will be a question mark come free agency as well. I'm open to keeping Benson around. I think we just got to see what the market truly is for him as he will swipe second base as well, getting his 11th of the season on the base paths. Um, again, we just got to see what the market truly is for him as Tyler Stevenson going to take care of business. All right, we get a stolen base for Benson and Stevenson will drive him in from second. Just like that, the Reds take the lead once again. We'll see what the market is for Benson. Um, and then here's another guy in Xavier Isaac, who unfortunately I think will end up back in AAA as Wow, what a throw by Brian Taylor Cruz. He's going to get one Tyler Stevenson at first base. I thought that ball might have dropped with Isaac, so I, you know, got off first a little bit with Stevenson. Nope, what a play by Brian De La Cruz. So again, we will see what the market is for Benson. Xavier Isaac, I hate to say it, I think he's going to end up back in AAA. Because would I rather him play every day and fully develop over in AAA, or do we keep him around as a bench bat? The answer to that is let him develop in AAA. I think the goal in the offseason for us should be sign a free agent first baseman on a one to two year contract, let him be the starter because I don't feel great about letting Christian Encarnacion Strand be the permanent guy at first base. I think we can do a lot better in that position. So I think we sign a first baseman, let Xavier Isaac and even CES, you know, develop some more as well. And then look back after we get done with that one to two year deal with that first baseman. And now we're going to get our first look at Kumar Rocker. Again, he has dealt with injuries after coming out of Vanderbilt, but let's see what Rocker does for us tonight. Again, he was the second call up with Novi Marte come September, and we're just seeing what we have from him. Again, he will likely end up in AAA to start the season next year. We will see what our starting rotation looks like, but Rocker goes one, two, three in the top of the sixth, preserving the lead at two to one for the Reds. Again, we'll see what the rotation is. I think we will be looking to add somebody. Um, I think the five guys we have in the rotation right now will likely still be on the team next year. I think one of them just probably going to move to the bullpen. I'm considering probably that being Drew Thorpe. I think Martin Valenzuela will probably stay in the rotation. And we have a bunch of other pitching prospects as well. Um, guys like Rhett Lauder, we've got Kumar Rocker and a bunch of guys that we have traded for as well, Jackson Ferris. I think some of those guys, probably not Lauder, probably not Rocker, but some of the other guys we have in the in the farm system, I think are going to be moved. Because again, we're not trying to play that much in the future. We have, I believe, eight top 100 prospects. Our farm system is absolutely loaded and it gives us a lot of options. Again, it lets us keep the prospects we want to keep developing. And it also allows us to just bring in more MLB ready guys who can make an immediate impact and makes it so we don't have to wait forever for a guy who's not going to have an ETA until what, 2029? So again, we will look at trading some of the prospects. Obviously, I'm not going to trade everybody, but some of the guys who, you know, we might have multiple catchers, which we do, we might have multiple pitchers. We can move on for some of those guys. Daniel Hudson this season, I'm not pitching him right now just to, you know, show like, hey, we had Daniel Hudson this year. No, Daniel Hudson since being called up in mid, you know, July has had a 0.53 ERA. He's given up one run in 18 innings. 
I'm serious. I'm keeping Daniel Hudson next year as long as he doesn't retire. He's 39. I am more than willing to offer him a major league contract next season because right there he went one, two, three in the top of the eighth. So we are three outs from winning here tonight. Let's see if we can get some insurance runs for our closer in at Camilo Doval. Sal Stewart on the one to another one of these guys. Well, actually, no, Sal Stewart might be a bench piece next season. I'm not against that. TJ Fried on the one, one rips one into right field. That ball is caught. So ninth inning time for Camilo Doval trying to notch another save to close out this season. It would be save number 38, 2.52 ERA in the season for him. You'll see Tim Anderson first, and Anderson going to ground one to who else? Joey Votto. One out for Luis Arise on the 2-2 pitch. Arise goes up the middle, and you knew the guy who's batting 344 was likely going to find his way on the base paths with a hit tonight. He is on with the one-out single. Jake Berger, though, going to strike out on the slider away. Final out of the season for the Marlins. Nick Fortes pops one. Foul ground. There is Sal Stewart, and that's your ball game. The Cincinnati Reds take game 162 against the Miami Marlins. They win it by a score of 2-1. to one. Yes, it was low scoring, but again, a win is a win. And the Reds end the season sweeping the Miami Marlins, winning this three-game set. Again, 3 nothing, and finishing the season with a record of 76 wins and 86 losses. For the Marlins, they will finish 68-94. and 94. So, folks, thank y'all for watching episode number 34 in the 2025 season here with the Cincinnati Reds. It will get a lot better next season. Season, trust me, we are ready to contend once more, and it starts with the offseason tomorrow night. So, folks, thank you all for watching. Make sure to hit that subscribe button down below for more. Make sure you leave a like if you aren't excited for the offseason tomorrow. Thank you all for watching, and Mamba forever.